Hello, I'm Dinesh D'Souza, and I'm going to be talking to you about a couple of themes from my new book, The Roots of Obama's Rage. The premise of the book is that Obama's ideology, derived from his father, is the ideology of anti-colonialism. The idea that the West is bad, America is a rogue elephant trampling the world, American corporations are exploiting and taking advantage of people, and the job of the anti-colonialist, Obama's job, is to block, to lasso the rogue elephant, to curb and tame these neo-colonial influences in America. I want to talk in this segment about two controversial characters who have been associated with Obama. Their association is mysterious. No one's been able to figure out what attracted Obama to these guys. I'm thinking of the Reverend Jeremiah Wright and the controversial activist Bill Ayers. And I'm going to show that the anti-colonial theory fully explains his attraction to both these people. Now a lot of people think Obama's a Muslim. This is completely wrong. Uh, Obama's father was born a Muslim, his stepfather was born a Muslim, but frankly neither of them practiced it either. Obama was pretty clear, uh, clearly a secular guy, a non-practicing guy. And in fact, when he worked for a church group in Chicago, the pastors would ask him, what church do you go to? And Obama would say nothing, he was embarrassed because he didn't go. So finally one of his friends said, look, you better find a church. Doesn't matter what you believe, just you need to be associated with a church. Why don't you try this Trinity Church with the Reverend Jeremiah Wright? So Obama goes, I'll check it out. And he goes to Trinity Church, and what's interesting is when he's on the outside, he sees a sign in the lawn, a big sign that says, Free South Africa. Suddenly Obama goes, Free South Africa? This is exactly the global anti-colonial idea. South Africa's fighting apartheid, let's remember. And Obama goes, this is fascinating. He walks in. Inside he sees a man who is a little bit of a clown, a little bit of a ridiculous figure. Because of course Jeremiah Wright is sort of one part um, Afrocentrist, uh, one part scam artist, but then mostly an anti-colonialist. And what I mean by this is if you listen to what Jeremiah Wright says, only a few of his snippets have been reported in the media. You know, goddamn America, the government is spreading AIDS in the black community and so on. Now that's not Obama. He, he doesn't think the government's spreading AIDS. But if you listen to the themes of Jeremiah Wright's sermons, very easy to do, you can download them, you'll see that his themes are anti-colonial. The United States uh, occupied the land belonging to the Cherokee, the Apache, the Comanche, the Sioux. In other words, America itself is a colonial occupation of the land of the Indians. And then he says, we bombed Gaddafi, we invaded Grenada, uh, we are invading Iraq and Afghanistan. So America is portrayed as this stampeding elephant that is trampling on the rights um, and dignity of the people of the world. So when Obama saw that, he discounted all the Afrocentric nonsense because there's a lot of foolishness in Jeremiah Wright. You know, Cleopatra was black, Jesus was black, everybody who invented anything was black. Obama re recognized that as foolish, but he saw the bigger theme of American oppression and he agreed with it. And that's why he stayed for 20 years in that church, baptized his children in that church, he gave his largest charitable contributions to that church. So this makes sense of it. You know, the conservative idea that he must have agreed with all the extremism of, no. But the liberal idea, hey, he sat in the church for 20 years, but he didn't really hear any of the stuff, that, that's absurd also. But you plug in the anti-colonial theory and you can see that while Obama didn't go along with some of Wright's extremism, fundamentally he was there because he belonged there. What about Bill Ayers? Bill Ayers is the activist who bombed the Pentagon. Uh, he was an anti-Vietnam guy. Uh, he was a, an agitator against the war in the 60s. Uh, and Obama was thick pals with him. They served on boards together. Uh, they, were, they were pretty close associates, if not good friends. Uh, Ayers had a fundraiser for Obama when he first ran uh, for state senate and so on. And now people have been mystified because obviously Obama's not going to bomb the Pentagon. So why would he associate with Ayers? Now, here's where we have to get a little perspective. When we think of the Vietnam War, we think it's an anti-communist war. It's to prevent the commies from taking over Vietnam. That's the way it was portrayed by Lyndon Johnson and earlier by Kennedy and Eisenhower. But, but, that was not the way the war was seen by Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh was the leader of the, Vietnam, the North Vietnamese. And remember that Vietnam was a colony of the French. And after the tragedy of Dien Bien Phu, the French got out, 
and America came in. So America was seen as the latest neo-colonial force occupying a foreign country, in this case, South Vietnam. So from Ho Chi Minh's point of view, this was an anti-colonial war. And if you read Bill Ayer's book, Fugitive Days, which I have and I cite, Bill Ayer saw it that way too. Bill Ayer says, this is an anti-colonial war. I am an anti-colonial fighter, and that's why I did what I did. So for Obama, he would not have approved of what Bill Ayers did, but he couldn't help but identify with Bill Ayers as a fellow anti-colonialist fighting to overthrow Western, and in this case, American uh, occupation. And that's why Obama and Ayers were, at least for a period of time, kindred spirits.